a whole big bunch of new on-field coaches for Nebraska football. And are the Huskers falling behind in recruiting? We get into it all next. You are Locked On Nebraska, your daily Nebraska Cornhuskers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as playoffs wind down. The sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com, Locked On, to get started. And thank you for making Locked On Nebraska your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, good morning. Welcome to the Locked On Nebraska podcast. Connor Happer, Mitch Sherman with you. Uh, A lot of different things going on this week. We're getting into the the doldrums of summer, so there's a, a couple things that have kind of taking precedent. Um, we we may touch yet again on the uh, Texas, Texas A&M budding war. I guess it's a war that's already existed for like hundreds of years now, but um, had another chapter had another chapter this week. Um, so we, we, we might touch on that a little bit. That was certainly the story of the week um, around the college athletics world. I want to, I want to dive into this Mitch, because this went a little under probably talked about undercovered a little bit. Maybe there's, something where people aren't exactly sure what to make of it, but the NCAA division one council issued a ruling this week and it lifted all limitations on the number of coaches and support staffers who were allowed to actually coach, um, you know, give, you know, personal like coaching points and, and development points on the field in games and in practices. So this is something that Nebraska, and we've talked about the size of Nebraska staff before, as far as its support is concerned, Um, it's something that Nebraska has been anticipating and it definitely impacts Nebraska as much as, you know, probably any program in the country. And it means that all of Matt rules, analysts and quality control coaches can, um, can do a lot more to help his team. One of the points that I made and Mitch, I want, I want you to kind of introduce these people and kind of, you know, what it might look like for Nebraska. But, um, I, I think an important part of this is, you know, the, the staff that rule has, has created the organization that we've talked about on this podcast from top to bottom that you need to have. And the one kind of consistent message that it all goes back to the head coach. I think that's a big reason why it helps Nebraska as much as anybody else in the country. They have a gigantic staff right now. And now they're, they're, they're going to be able to utilize it in a, in a more efficient way. It seems like, so I guess what's your kind of thought on, on the ruling that we saw this week? Well, first of all, it's common sense because it was so dumb the way it was before. You had all of these people who had coaching experience who were a part of your organization. And you know all the stuff that's going on in college athletics right now with um, access to to resources and money that just hasn't existed in, in the past. NIL, the transfer portal, everything's just like opening up. And still, you only had 10 assistant coaches out of like the 30 who who could coach that were allowed to actually be hands-on on the practice field and in games. It's it's like, why? I mean, these people are there. Why not let them coach? If you can fit them into your organization and make it work. I mean, there, there, there can be too many cooks in the kitchen and that's what I think some programs have to watch out for, Definitely, but too many voices in the room. But if you can make it work, like, why are we holding these people back? Why are we limiting opportunities of, of coaches who, who work for these programs and preventing the athletes from being able to get instruction from qualified people and the ncaa division one council said yeah that's a good question so we're going to take those limits away and nebraska has been anticipating this and it's why you've seen a couple of the moves that were made in the offseason made in the way that they were namely that josh martin who was nebraska's full-time tight ends coach last year stuck around um, as an analyst this year when The Huskers brought on Glenn Thomas as co-OC and moved Marcus Satterfield over to coach the tight ends. Martin, instead of going and looking for another job, he stayed uh, with the expectation that this thing was going to happen that did happen here in June. So um, as an analyst, um, they can still pay him good money. And he now he can coach again. He can he's not gonna be able to go on the road and recruit except under 
um, you know, special circumstances where you might need to replace a coach on the road. But um, he can do all the coaching that he did last year and, and you know, help Sat and help others on the offensive side. And then you add in people like, I'll start with Kevin McGarry, who's a, a veteran coach, senior defensive analyst is his title. You have Ron Brown, who's been around the Nebraska program for decades. You have Adam DeMichelle, who's a, a former Temple quarterback under Matt Rule um, that has been one of the main um, characters, one of the main pieces in helping Nebraska put together its quarterback room away from the practice field. Now he can be involved on the practice field. Aaron Coling um, has been, a, he was a holdover from the, from the Frost regime and has meshed well with Donovan Raiola um, is like your co-offensive line coach. So now he can coach. Uh, Frank Verducci, a longtime assistant throughout college football, throughout the Big Ten. He actually took over the offensive line in 2021 when Nebraska mm -hmm. was making changes before it brought in Donovan Raiola. You know, the list goes on. There's Josh Bringill, who um, who came from Syracuse with Tony White and has been around um, this Nebraska defensive scheme for a while. So all of them now can be on the field and do their jobs um, to, to, in, in the most efficient way that, that, that Matt rule sees possible. And that, that like, to me is a win-win. It's a no brainer. It's something that, um, is overdue and it's great for Nebraska. It helps Nebraska because Nebraska has a big, big roster, bigger than most uh, programs in college football, big roster, big staff. And, and so the important thing to remember for me, and I, I talked about this the other day on my show, it's like, here's why Nebraska is positioned well with, with this ruling. It's because they have a head coach who is really good at this <laughs> like it's, yeah oh it's yeah really good at being the ceo of the program in, in order to in order to do this correctly the messaging has to be consistent and i mean there's a reason why we've talked about this before too mitch like it, we're, we're talking to all these support staff members and analysts and yeah. assistant coaches over the last oh, yeah. several weeks and matt rule doesn't put them out there if he doesn't feel comfortable that they're gonna you know continue to convey his message in the in the proper way so I think he's got all you know some real synergy in the program right now, and this is another another advantage for Nebraska to kind of continue that moving in the right direction. But they have to have that right guy at the top, and they they definitely do in the CEO role right now. And this doesn't even include the grad assistants who were already allowed to coach, but there's grad assistants on his staff who are also voices in this um, in this environment. And and so it's going to be like an NFL team now. You know, before we, we said it was like a mini NFL team, the way that that rule ran things. And one of the main um, the main separators between the NFL and the college system that Matt Rule has been designing at Nebraska is that the NFL staff staffs were bigger. The coaching staffs were bigger. And you had an assistant wide receivers coach and, you know, you had the the offensive quality control, you know, who was out there on the field coaching and, and they've had quality control at Nebraska, but they weren't allowed to coach on the field. Now they are. Um, Rule has said over and over that he wants his assistant coaches to get jobs, um, to get head coaching jobs, his coordinators. He wants his assistant coaches to become coordinators. And if that means leaving Nebraska, then that's okay. And when they have openings, he wants to promote from within. So he mm -hmm. wants guys like Adam D. Michelle and Josh Martin, um, younger coaches like those and some others to have opportunities to become full-time assistants at Nebraska. So this only enhances that process and makes it more efficient. So when there are departures, if Nebraska does well on the, on the field, some of its coaches will be rewarded and they'll get other jobs. And now Nebraska will be even better positioned under Matt rule to promote from within because they can take guys who've had experience, not just uh, being analysts, but being, on field assistant coaches and, and move them into, you know, seamlessly into, into the roles of the people who left. You know, it's funny. I think other, I think other programs around the country are going to interpret this rule uh, change and, and, or I guess expansion of it and use it as a, I don't know, I guess an excuse to go out and hire analysts in the way that we've seen teams use analysts before former head coaches who had just got fired and they'll bring them into their program and they'll say, all right, we got this guy on staff now. And it's another, it's a, that's how Nebraska is. That's not how Nebraska is going to play it. Like you just said, yeah. they're going to do exactly the opposite. They're going to try and promote from within. So all these people who are, who are, you know, assistant O-line coaches and all the, you know, whatever beyond that, as of right now, positions like that, helping out full-time assistants, they'll cycle through and they'll be able to eventually become the full time one of the 11. So you, you yeah. essentially have one of these situations where you have like your, your position coach 
and they kind of become a head coach. And then, you know, they, they have the boss above them and the CEO as well. It's really interesting design. You're going to see programs that are at the highest level in the power conferences, the ones that have like the endless supply of money, um, go and hire assistant coaches, maybe even coordinators from, from like group of five level programs, which is just going to continue to further that divide, the haves and the have nots. So Ohio State could hire, let's say the Akron um, offensive coordinator to be its assistant quarterbacks coach um, or whatever, you know, the offensive quality control. And they can pay the guy, you know, $250,000, maybe, maybe pay him more than what he was making as a coordinator or an assistant coach at one of the smaller programs. Um, And, and you're going to decimate the, 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 the smaller schools, the division one schools, or they may go get, get, get assistant coaches from the the FCS level, who knows, but staffs are going to look, at the college level pretty soon, if not this year in 2024, then, then by 2025, like the NFL staff. There's not going to be a whole lot of different differentiation between like the Atlanta Falcons staff and the Georgia Bulldogs staff. Uh, coming back here on the other side, the uh, the A Sports video game continues to put out content and we continue to react to it. So we'll have we'll have some thoughts on uh, what that looks like on the other side. But a reminder to please subscribe and follow on on Twitter at Locked on NEB. You can email us, of course. Um, any questions you might have, things you want to see on the podcast, locked on NEB at gmail.com. We'll be back after this. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. Mitch Sherman here for eBay Motors. It has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. You want a supercharger, a roof rack, exhaust kit, LED headlights, and more. All that sounds good. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at all the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back. Mitch Sherman here. Connor Happer is with me as always. Connor, um, we just continue to do free advertising for the folks <laughs> at EA Sports. Um, I don't know. They, they, I feel like EA Sports should be like a sponsor for like us and like every other everybody um, talk sports talk medium that exists in America this um, this summer because they are genius in the way that they are leading up to the much anticipated release of the college football. 25 game that's coming out on July 19th. Earlier this week, we got the tw- the 25 most difficult stadiums to play um, as an opponent. And, you know, as we discussed on the show on Tuesday, Nebraska was not on this list. Um, you know, I think some of this is done like completely by design to, to generate conversation. Like, I don't even know if they really feel whoever the experts are for EA sports really truly feel the way that they do about these rankings. It's more like what's going to make people mad and happy and want to talk about this. So in case you don't know, in case you're like among the 1% of people who don't know that this game is coming out in July, you're going to find out because everyone's talking about it. By the way, you mentioned that you are um, you're you're in on on playing um, college football twenty five, and I'm a little bit scared because um, I wasn't big into playing college football, um, EA Sports college football, like back in 2014 when it when it came out. I was just like probably just a couple years older than like their target audience. Um, my son, he's he's into it and he's super excited about it. And I just found out that I think I need to get him a new. I'm gonna have to buy like a new three hundred dollar console just in in order to play the game. Like, <laughs> yep. what what? Like he's got an Xbox that's one of the more modern Xboxes, but th- this game is not going to work on it. No, you got to level up. You got to get the most recent one. That's um, that's you know, it's uh, it's part of the investment. Unfortunately, and you're you're not going to get anything back on that investment either. It's just going to be dumping <laughs> money into it. So I wish I could tell you that. Oh yeah, you know, you'll get something back at the end. Well, no, you won't. And um, so you're right. They've been pumping out this content. So the 
like does Nebraska have a top 25 defense? I mean, I, I yes. f- we're, we're here at the locked on Nebraska podcast. We're here in Nebraska. Nebraska's defense was objectively good last year. Right. And they objectively bring, they, they objectively bring like most people back from that defense. I, I don't mm-hmm. like, I, I have some stats for you. If we want to like, go ahead and, and confirm that Nebraska's defense was good last year. Yeah. Yeah. So, they they gave up 18 points, just a little over 18 points a game, which was 11th in the country. 4.4 opponent yards per play, which was fifth in the country. They were uh, they gave up less than 93 rush yards a game, which was seventh in the country. Uh, they were top 40 in opponent pass defense yards per game. Um, and you know, for for all the talk about them not getting, but it was against the, field, the Big Ten West. That's, right, that's the rally no cry. quarterbacks, yeah. no offense. I mean, I guess yeah. the, you know there's there's something to be said for that. And then for as much as we talk about how they weren't able to get off the field on third down and they want to get better at that, which they should, um, they were top fifty in the country still there as well. They have two of the better, like more disruptive guys up front. They have one of the better defensive fronts in the country that is back. Like, there's no world in which that isn't a top twenty five defense in the country. I'm sorry, EA Sports. I'll still EA play Sports does not care. They do not no. care. But who is the top 25 defense in the country? Uh, Colorado comes in at number 20. I mean, some of the teams on this list that came out Thursday, Ohio State's number one, Georgia's number two, a way to go out on a limb there. Oregon's number three. Oregon has a great defense. Okay. Um, Alabama, number four, Clemson. Then you see like Michigan, Texas, Penn State, Iowa, Wisconsin, Big Ten West, USC, you know, Kansas State's on there. I was kind of taken aback to see the Buffs, who didn't play great defense in uh, 2023, come in at number 20. I feel like um, Colorado, just because of Deion Sanders, is like a requirement to be included in every list. Although uh, Folsom Field was not on the uh, on the 25 most difficult places to play. Uh, they dropped the ball on that one. EA should have put should have put Boulder in the top 25, even though it has no business being there. Um, just, just to, uh, you know, if they truly want to like put their money where their mouth is and do this to generate conversation, then, then uh, you know, why not? Because the Buffs are also eighth, Right. On the offensive list, where you know, you know, and not surprisingly, Nebraska is nowhere to be found on the offensive list. Uh, Colorado, just for reference, and I know that they'll tell you that they upgraded talent and stuff like that. Colorado did not crack the top 100 last year in opponent mm-hmm. yards per play, so mm-hmm. they they gave up a, a more than six yards per play last year, and that's a they they gave them a top 25 defense in the game. Hey, you know, it's um, I guess it comes with the territory. They have some star power. Um, I will say that there's, like I said, there's no world in which Nebraska doesn't have a better defense than, than them. Um, at, at, at least at this point, also, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, talking about the big 10 West, I'm going to speak up for my friends, uh, across the river here, Iowa, I was going to tap, like I was one of the best defenses of the country every, every year. Like, I know mm-hmm. we don't like to respect them because they don't have like the, the talent or whatever, but I mean, to that point they get, you know, like a handful of guys drafted off of their defense every year. So, First rounders. They're 13th. Yeah. They're 13th. That's not bad, but um, I, they're I better than that. Put them higher. I put them higher. I mean, they're Iowa, when you, when you have no offense and you still win eight or nine games, then your defense is really good. And Phil Parker deserves more than to say, yeah, your defense, we're going to stick you in the middle teens. Like, eh, I mean, some of the teams ahead of them, I get it. They have more talent. If you're at Alabama, Michigan, but Iowa consistently year in and year out plays the some of the best, most fundamental, just technically sound defense in the country. And like you said, produces NFL talent. I really appreciate EA Sports for doing this, though, because it's given me like it's given me offshoots of stuff to talk about. Now, we're, I'm, I mean, we, we talked about um, early, on this podcast earlier this week, right, Mitch, like what Nebraska could do for their home field advantage. Yeah. You know. And today we're, you know, I want to talk about how, what Nebraska's defense could be this year. So it's just given, given us ideas. We're getting the wheels turning a little bit. Are they uh, releasing any more content uh, Ooh, today? A, a, list, a list that I could get mad about today. Or I don't today know if there's one today, but I do believe there are several more leading up to that. There's going to be player right. rankings that are coming out real soon. Ooh. So you can go on and see where Dylan Rayola ranks among the power five quarterbacks that that's get mad. We're, getting, we're getting at least one segment out of that. Yep. Um, I know at the athletic, we've been doing our own rankings. So like taking the EA sports rankings of the, of the um, top 25 offenses and defenses, and then 
um, applying our own metrics. Uh, Austin Mock, who is a, a, a writer um, at The Athletic, he's got a formula that he uses and uh, it's it spits out um, it spits out a ranking. And Nebraska did make the top 25. Go check that out on The Athletic. Um, Nebraska is is included in the top 25 defensively in um, in in those rankings. They're more, I think, they're more like genuine and not necessarily created for uh, the sake of conversation um, as much as uh, as these are. There's there's not like a journalistic standard that uh, EA Sports is, no. is held to in this in this stuff. So and and you can tell, and it works. It's a video game, um, but it's definitely we're we're definitely in the heart of list season, um, and so we'll take anything we can get. At this point, so we we appreciate EA Sports from the from the bottom of our hearts. We'll uh, they need to do they need to up it and like next year like do position rankings. I don't and maybe they will, but like posi- like I want to know the top. I want to know the top ten tight ends in the Big Ten, and and then we can yell about that. Yeah, exciting. No, I I think uh, we could just send it along to EA Sports. They'd be happy to take you up on that suggestion. Uh, yeah. Let's let's round the show out today on a Friday with a little bit of recruiting talk. What's going on? with Nebraska and recruiting right now. Should we be concerned? We'll discuss it on the other side. But first, if you're watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day and you have to turn down the volume, uh, make the switch to Lockdown Sports today. Free for free, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Lockdown Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. That's part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, we are uh, in the doldrums of the of the summer. It's Connor Happer here for the FanDuel Sportsbook. The NBA, the NHL playoffs are done. The NBA draft is behind us. Fewer games, and no, the the it's we're not quite in the fire hose of sports season anymore. But guess what? FanDuel, they're still there for you, and they are still helping you out whenever you want to get in on the action. Major League Baseball is still going on. You can bet on home runs to be hit by any of your favorite Major League Baseball players or the Royals to take however many out of four this weekend uh, in a must-maybe-win series against one the one. Cleveland Guardians. Yeah, it's it's important right now. So you want to jump on the FanDuel Sportsbook? We welcome you to. And uh, we got a little incentive for you as well. FanDuel is hooking all customers up with a boost or a bonus daily. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long on FanDuel all customers get a boost or a bonus daily. Head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and make the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right, welcome back. Uh, third and final segment here on a Friday. Connor Hamper, Mitch Sherman with you. Uh, Nebraska trying to get the ball rolling a little bit further on their 2025 recruiting class as we almost head into July. Um, you know, if we, if we flash back to the spring game, if we flash back to May, maybe it hasn't exactly gone according to plan. Um, they've, they've taken some shots at some really, really high profile targets, um, but they've come up empty on a few. They did get a commitment last night an interesting story of Brian Tapu, who's who was a lean to Nebraska, then ended up committed to Oregon State for like 72 hours and then ended up committed to Nebraska pretty much immediately after that. That was odd. Connor, do you uh, think that somebody <laughs> told him that Oregon State is no longer a part of the Pac-12 and that the Pac-12 doesn't exist and like Oregon State is in the wilderness of college football and he was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm I'm out. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, uh, it, maybe he just got, you know, he fell in love with the, with all the trees and it's a cool all, place. Cool yeah. Palace. All the various yeah. things that they have up there. So maybe he just fell in love and said, I want to do this. And then went back home and said, mm, maybe not so much, but he's in the class yeah. now. Uh, Nebraska did get some commitments in June from guys like Jamari and Parker, Malcolm Simpson and, and Pierce Mooberry out of, out of Millard North. Uh, 12 in the class at the moment. But like I said, they've taken some cracks, some high profile guys and have come up empty. There's a couple in-state guys that are going to be really important for them yeah. um, going forward that we've talked about on this podcast, like Christian Jones and, and Chase Lofton. I guess, how do you, where do you feel like they're at right now as we head into a, yeah. now? it's been an important month of June and now it becomes an important month of July. 
Yeah, my biggest takeaway is I thought they would do more in June. I thought I and and they did a lot in bringing players to campus, but I thought they would get more momentum. And and really where that I expected it to start was with guys like Jones and Lofton. Um Lofton the tight end from Millard South, Christian Jones, the um Nebraska legacy his dad played for the Huskers linebacker from Omaha West Side. I thought that 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 you'd get one or maybe both of those guys to jump on board and that's where the ball starts rolling downhill. Um Instead, they're both still out there and may join the class. But what's the timeline for that? Because we've seen in the past that June is where this stuff happens. And you look around the country at programs um, that Nebraska wants to compete with, and they've had it rolling in June. And Nebraska, to some degree, had it rolling last year in June. And, you know, we should look back at that and be, um, if you're Nebraska, I think you appreciate even more like what Daniel Kalen did for you last June because he came on right yeah. at the end of May, and then was in Lincoln every weekend, kind of pounding the drum for the Huskers. And they also kind of generated some momentum by offering some players who I think they knew would commit, guys at camp that didn't have offers. And this just June was just it's just a little bit of a slower grind, um, a different a different track. And they've got some work to do in the month of July, which um, you know wasn't necessarily a, a big um, a big month for gathering commitments a year ago. Now I will say this, um, in addition to, you know, my commentary about how I thought more would happen in June, it is a different kind of year because in 2025, uh, roster reductions are coming as a result of the house settlement. And Nebraska has like 50 freshmen coming in, in 24 and had a huge class also a year ago. So you can't go out and do this again where you sign 30 scholarship caliber players and add on 15 quality walk-ons. Like you're going to be way over whatever the limit is that is imposed. So to some degree um it is they are they they are doing the right thing by being more selective and you know sitting at 12 by itself is not really an issue right now as we get closer to the 4th of July it's m- my concern in 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 looking at this from a momentum standpoint is more just that they have not locked up um the players that you would consider the biggest priorities in their own backyard i agree um I think they have 70 is it more than 70 freshmen on their on their roster at the moment if you include the guys who are in the red shirts in the yeah. class too yeah. yeah that's um yeah it's that's not going to work like you you, you can't right. you can't continue to do that in the new world of college football that's coming right so um you, you can't necessarily take a gigantic class again unless you're talking about you know shuffling people out especially when there's when there's roster limits on guys um they do have their their quarterback in the class. We've talked about TJ Latif before, but he had an interesting moment this week at the at the Elite Eleven Finals in an interview with Twenty Four Seven Sports. He kind of was checking all the boxes. Um, they were going through it. Him and and Tom Loy of Twenty Four Seven, and then some some boxes to check at the end, which were, "Hey, are you going to enroll early?" He said yes, and then, um, "Are you? Are, is your recruitment shut down?" was was the final question, and he said. I am not going to talk about that. <laughs> and everyone was weird. like, it's weird. Yeah, that's weird. That's, that's interesting. Now he's tried to clarify with a couple of the local recruiting experts. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's totally smoothed over. It was just more confusing. I think than anything on Latif. I don't know if there's anything really to worry about at, at this moment. And I don't know that it like totally matters that much. Um, but it's it was certainly an interesting hashtag curtain moment this week. It's a reminder that this stuff's not done till it's done. Yeah. And Nebraska was on the uh, on the end to benefit from recruiting flips from the at the quarterback position a year ago. Both of its quarterbacks were flips. Um, Kalen was committed to Missouri before he signed with Nebraska. Riola, you may have heard, was committed to Ohio State and Georgia before he signed with Nebraska as a late ad in December. So. These things are, it's fluid. It changes. Like, it's not unusual to like hear a quarterback being honest and saying, like, yeah, I'm going to evaluate this thing down to the end. Um, but it's jarring, I think, if you're a fan because you just expect, well, this kid visited for the spring game. He committed shortly after that time. You know, he should be someone who's like leading this group. And as I said about Daniel Kalen last year, like, really 
um, drumming up support for Nebraska as it bids to fill out the class. And, you know, it's harder for TJ Latif to do that because he's in Orange County, California, not Bellevue, Nebraska. He can't be on campus every weekend when guys are coming in on OVs and unofficials. But um, you would like to hear him make a more definitive statement when he's asked at the Elite 11 finals about whether he's done, even if you're not, even if you're not sure. Um, I'm going to take this down to December, whatever. Like, usually you don't say that. And, you know, um, he's, as you said, Connor, he's, he's clarified. And, you know, I wouldn't say that it's like a reason to be worried or that Nebraska should go out and like start recruiting other 2025 quarterbacks. But, you know, you just have to be aware of the situation and, and, and Matt Rule and his coaches are, and I'm sure that they will, uh, you know, they, ha they have probably had some contact with TJ and, and will continue to foster that relationship. But, you know, some of his, um, you know, final decision, I suppose you could call it, which is which exists for every player, um, is going to to involve watching Dylan Rayola and um, watching this offense this year, yep. and then watching the offenses at other programs um, that may continue to put the heat on him as um, as we get closer to signing day. I will say this last thing before we go. It's it's really difficult to get fired up about 2025 quarterback recruiting given what Nebraska has on their roster and the and the youth of it. With that being yeah. said, one of those guys leaves and and it changes, you know, drastically right away. And then and then all of a sudden you're back into scramble mode. You think he got spooked by Jalen Gramstad? <laughs> oh, maybe. I don't know. I tend to think it's probably a little bit more of the the incoming Joking. freshman who um, is a five star and has like three at least three years in front of him, but I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe some of this, some of that. So yeah. um, a lot to look forward to in, in recruiting at this time. And Nebraska still has kind of an incomplete class right now that they need to kind of get going in the next, in the next four weeks. I'd, yeah. I'd say. So uh, time off for Nebraska coaches in July, but they'll have their cell phones uh, in their, in their pockets, wherever they are, if they're uh, out uh, um, enjoying some downtime before training camp starts, because the recruits will be calling um, they would hope and, and join in this class. So um, we will end with that. Have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, I want to let you know that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app.